Good evening and welcome to our service of night prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And a reading from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. In your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. How abundant is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them safe in your refuge from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his steadfast love. Love the Lord, all you his servants, for the Lord protects the faithful. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait in hope for the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And a reading from Mark's Gospel. Jesus went away from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom which is given to him? What mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter? the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour, except in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands upon a few sick people and healed them. And he marvelled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called to him the twelve, and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals, and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, When you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place, and if any place will not receive you, and they refuse to hear you. When you leave, shake off the dust that's on your feet for a testimony against them. So they went out and preached that men should repent, and they cast out many demons, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. Are there things in life that you find hard to understand? Like why footballers earn so much? Why more people vote in the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent than do in general elections? How on earth banks and politicians have managed to get our finances into such a mess? Our gospel looks at something which seems a huge puzzle. How come the people from Jesus' own town, the ones who know him best, the ones who've seen him tell storms to stop, seen him bring a little girl back from the dead, how come they reject him? It's a similar one to the readers of Mark's Gospel often asked. How come God's own chosen people, the Jews, weren't accepting him? The answer to the puzzle is that people don't like having to change their ideas on things. There's a joke. How many members of the Church of England does it take to change a light bulb? Change? 
The people who had known Jesus and his family from birth had a set view of him, of who he was, and no amount of evidence was going to change their mind. In the same way, the Jewish nation had clear ideas and expectations of what the Messiah was going to be like, and they were not about to rethink. People don't like being challenged, being made to reevaluate their approach, being asked to look at what obeying God's laws might really be for them. A little story called The Truth Shop. I could hardly believe my eyes when I saw the name of the shop, The Truth Shop. The saleswoman was very polite. What type of truth did I wish to purchase? Partial or whole? The whole truth, of course. No deceptions for me, no defences, no rationalisations. I wanted my truth plain and unadulterated. She waved me on to another side of the store. The salesman there pointed to the price tag. The price is very high, sir, he said. What is it? I asked, determined to get the whole truth, no matter what it cost. Your security, sir, he answered. I came away with a heavy heart. I still need the safety of my unquestioned beliefs. What are the lessons for us in all of this? If we take the first half of our gospel reading, the lack of faith of Jesus' townsfolk, and compare it with the second half of the passage, the sending out of the twelve, we see that, as so often in the Gospels, we're given two contrasting models for life. The disciples are given power and authority from God to deal with evil spirits, to heal sick, to preach. Unlike those with whom he grew up, who rejected him, the disciples showed faith. They go out without any protection, no food, no money, no extra clothes, trusting in God. We are given the choice to be like the people of Jesus' hometown or, as those who would have been in Mark's readers' minds, the Jews, and decide it's all too much to reject him. Or we can be like Jesus' disciples and the Gentile Christians and make that choice to follow him in faith. So what does it mean to accept or receive Christ? It means to show the faith and trust of the disciples, to recognise the miracles not only of the crucifixion and resurrection, but also all the daily miracles in our own lives. So where do we find Christ? Where does he show himself to us? Not only in our worship or prayer or Bible study. Of course, he can be found and feeds us in all those ways but he's also present in everyone we meet. As Jesus puts it, if you did not do it for the least of these, my brothers, you did not do it for me. Christ is present throughout creation. He's there to be seen, to be discovered and enjoyed. Our God is a God of relationship, found in communion with others, in community. As it says in the Bible, Anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. That doesn't only mean our friends, or the people we like, or the people who are nice to us. It means everyone. When we don't show love to others, we're turning our backs on Christ. And that may mean that he can't do something great for them through us. Only when we see Christ in everyone we meet, and only when we love and serve him, whatever form he takes. Only then are we accepting Jesus and following him in faith. You, O oh Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Leave us not, O oh Lord our God. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep 
we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to lighten, to reveal you to the nations, and a glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. So in our prayers, when I say, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, will you respond, we sing praises to our God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. We will sing praises to our God. God of grace, you fill your church with diverse gifts. Inspire all who teach and seek to expound the scriptures. Fill us with a vision of your glory. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. We will sing praises to our God. God of grace, you raised up great leaders from among your people. We pray for those in authority, that you will give them the wisdom and strength they need to face the challenges in front of them. We pray especially for our own new members of parliament elected this week. We pray for leaders in those areas of the world torn apart by warfare or dealing with natural disasters. Direct all nations in the paths of righteousness and truth. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. We will sing praises to our God. God of grace, the twelve were sent out relying on hospitality to sustain them. Open the hearts of all to share of your bountiful goodness. Make our communities places of welcome and care. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. We will sing praises to our God. God of grace, the twelve were sent to anoint the sick. Pour out your healing spirit on all in need. In a few moments of silence, we remember those from our own communities who are sick and those who have asked for our prayers. In our weakness, may the power of your Christ dwell within us. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. We will sing praises to our God. God of grace, Jesus knew the love of family and friends. Be with all who mourn the loss of someone close. We entrust all who have died into the hope of your life and love. We make these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. So thank you for joining us for this service this evening. Do please come along to any of our services at Sundays or midweek at any of our churches. If you would like to contribute to the work of the church, there's the opportunity to do so on our giving page. 
and I hope that you all have a good week.